And I think the whole mindset of a nursing home, or, um, and, and I think they have their place, but it is that you're going there because uh, you're kind of giving up. And then there's a benefit that kept me in a nursing home for 30 days. I will not live that way again, ever. You go to a nursing home to die. hospitals are necessary. There are people that need them. You know, I don't want to have to need one. I would like to be able to stay at home, mm -hmm. not be costing extra money by going to the hospital. And I'm also saving the state a lot of money, <laughs> okay, um, because I'm not requiring thousands and thousands of dollars a month for care. I'm requiring so many hours uh, for care. So um, I think it's a nonsensical approach to cut waiver slots um, and support the nursing home industry. Um, and I, I think there could be an attitude that maybe people with disabilities or the elderly should be hidden away. Um, we need to be part of the community. We have a lot to offer. When I ended up in the chair and then uh, I was laying in the hospital that 26 years old and they were telling me that the best case scenario for me was going to be spending the rest of my life in a nursing home because even family wouldn't want to take care of me and help me out because it would become too much of a burden for them and so when I learned that there was places where I could go and live in an apartment and get personal care services uh, from an agency and live on my own independently. I was very excited about that. I had gotten to the point where I couldn't prepare food or anything like that, and I'd have friends maybe come over and help once in a while, but living on sandwiches was not doing it for me, and I couldn't get to the store. Um, this is enabling me to be independent. I have less depression because things are taken care of. Um, I um, have a lot of problems with fatigue, so, you know, they help clean my house, my laundry. There's no way I could doing my laundry. And I was told about these programs where I could live independently in my own apartment and so I thought I would try that. The difference between the self-direct care for me is giving me control over my own life. Mm -hmm. It's allowing me to pick the people that I want to wake me up in the morning. Or some things like I said I can't drive anymore right. there are certain things that get taken from you when you get in this situation that it's just nice to have someone that you trust that's going to be capable of helping you to do the things you can mm -hmm. they feed me they fix my meals they take me to and mm -hmm. from my doctor's appointments personal health personal mental health. I mean, it's tough enough to have to give up everything you have to give up as far as dignity goes, but to not be able to have that at all. There's a lot of people that's going to crush. Without the waiver hours, pretty much uh, their quality of life is not going to be very good. And, and loneliness and depression also are not good for health either. <laughs> Well, you're not going to be eating healthily. I mean, how are you going to be eating? I mean, it. I'm sorry, but that's nonsensical. Like, you need to be able to eat, and you need to prepare food to eat. And um, 
some people cannot prepare their own food. And so if you don't have time to prepare food, are you going to just not eat or just eat junk food? And a lot of people with disabilities have to have, you have to have halfway nutritious food because we don't have the luxury of our body being healthy to just overcome unhealthy eating. I have a dialysis diet and a renal diet because my kidneys, kidney have failed. Oh, I just and if I don't follow right that diet, that it really throws, I, I don't dialyze well. And if I don't follow that, I won't dialyze well. And if we don't dialyze well, we die. Meal from start to finish, I'd say at least 20, 30 minutes. And I still have to eat it. Um, because my health is actually dependent upon it at this stage, um, I have several very serious conditions, uh, some of which are potentially life-threatening, and uh, I have a lot of nausea and a lot of um, just no appetite, and without a uh, decent meal, you know, the, my the caregiver takes extra pains to try and find stuff that I like and can eat because I have a lot of food restrictions. Uh, I can't do Meals on Wheels because of that. Um, and um, without, I wouldn't even probably be hanging on as well as I am right now without decent food. People won't eat as well. Um, it'll s probably uh, hasten uh, or uh, exasperate any problems they have. Um, I, I think nutrition is, is, is one thing that is, is going to keep people healthy and that people that aren't healthy is, is one of the, I think, very needed medical modalities is you need to, to, you know, to do when you're not healthy. If you don't start eating right, you're, you're not going to achieve any kind of quality of health. All of the benefits that are coming to me from the state are astronomical. I really, really benefit from each and every one, and I'm very, extremely grateful. I think it's probably the greatest gift that I've had. Um, I wound up in the hospital with a, ner a nervous breakdown um, because I didn't have support. Uh, to take care of my physical needs and I was just exhausted and um, finding out about this kind of service so I could I could be home healthy um, mentally healthy part of the community um, it saved my life I absolutely love my life I my needs are are taken care of and it feels wonderful and I feel I feel valued like a valued part of this society and thanks to Lived. I'm able to stay at home. I'm able to eat, get to my doctor's appointments, you know, and mm -hmm. things of that nature. Whereas otherwise, I probably wouldn't be able to. Beyond that, I need this. And maybe not for reasons other people can grasp, see, or understand, but it's needed. It means everything. Um, independent living basically is just giving us the same opportunities as the rest of society. Mm -hmm. So having my own place, my own environment away from the world, um, that's the most important thing. If I didn't have help from these programs, I would have to live with friends or family or have roommates or there's the nursing home, and those options are not at all conducive to what I want for my life. But it also allows me to stay here, which is a super important to me because I'm not ready to, to throw in the towel tile yet, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to, to get more functionality back, not lose more. But I, I think Aging Services is, is somewhere in this, this thing too, and that they have provided uh, the helpline for when my son is finishing his degree. I, I you know, because I have fallen, broken my tailbone. They, they're doing the insurer. They've helped me with, which was a, a really concern of mine when I was uh, facing the possibility that cancer was back. 
um, recently, um, but it's not. <laughs> Uh, was they helped me with my will, advanced directive, stuff that I could not go pay a lawyer for, which just set my mind because now that I have all that in place, I can focus on getting healthy. So. I volunteered as um, a tutor to help um, children who are homeless. I mean, I have a great mind, I just um, get very, very tired easily, and I have chronic pain and a bone disease. Um, but um, I can get out, volunteer. I also am a spiritual healer, so I help people with um, healing issues. Um, I get out on the streets where I'm seen and part of the world, which is very important. I have a lot to offer. I have a lot of wisdom and knowledge to offer. But I was working in my wheelchair at the Walmart on the west end of town until mm -hmm. I was put in the hospital for five months and unable to work anymore. I've been working on a, finishing up my master's degree in education and right now I'm student teaching in a fifth grade class and really enjoying that. Like in the school where I'm at, there's some other students with disabilities, there's one little girl that's in a wheelchair and they've actually brought her down to see me just to, I guess, to give her an example that you don't necessarily have to let the fact that you are in a wheelchair limit you, that, you know, as an example that she can see me and know that she can aspire to be what she wants to be too. Hurt. I was studying sports medicine and um, coaching. I was in the sports world, um, but now I, I'm not really sure my purpose. I pray about it, and I feel God is leading me toward help advocating for handicap and disabled rights. I always get the question, do you live on your own? And it's nice to be able to say, yes, I do.